Hi guys and welcome back. This is Matt Chat episode 421 featuring an in-depth look at the new game Druid Stone, The Secret of the Menhir Forest. Just came out on May 15th. Now this is a game by Control Alt Ninja, uh, some of the team members of, of uh, uh, Almost Human, uh, the makers of the Legend of Grimrock games and they're back with this. It's very different uh, as you'll see than the Grimrock uh, series. Uh, this one's third person tactical turn based RPG and <laughs> it's truly rather excellent. I think you're really going to love this. I'll go ahead and say here if you want to get a copy of this, I recommend uh, instead of going directly to Steam, uh, go to the uh, druidstone game.com. Druidstone game.com uh, because there you can get the same thing. You get the DRM free version and also get a Steam key and a little bit of a discount, or you can uh, tip the makers of the game, which I think is nice. Of course, you can also get it from GOG.com, but I think you'd be uh, doing the most good, you know, <laughs> it doesn't make any difference to you. Uh, go ahead and go to Druidstone slash, or Druidstone minus, or hyphen, game.com, and get it from there. I'll post a link to it in the show notes. So $24.99. Uh, anyway, we've got a lot, of, lot to cover here, so without further ado, here is Druidstone. And here we go, folks, with Druid Stone, the secret of the Minhir Forest. Fabulous game. Been having a blast with this thing. Uh, there's a whole lot to like here. A lot of interesting stuff they've done uh, with the genre. Uh, there's some interesting, even some interesting backstory to this. So you might have played uh, some other of my favorite games. The Legend of Grimrock series. There's two of those uh, by a company called Almost Human. I've actually interviewed... Uh, uh, one of the developers, Yuho uh, Salada, on my program before. Great guy. Uh, but anyway, those games were uh, uh, first-person Dungeon Master-style games. Uh, Grid-based movement, uh, a lot of puzzles, a lot of strategy. Uh, pretty, you know, pretty solid role-playing mechanics, but basically puzzle-based uh, dungeon crawler. Uh, this one is a third-person game. It's a lot more story-driven, a lot more character-driven. Uh, there's, there's puzzles here and uh, sort of a tactical turn-based style, but it doesn't really have dice rolling, so I'm not even really sure if it's technically a role-playing game or not, but we'll get into that. Uh, but just, you know, even at this, even just loading the damn thing up, I mean, if we look at this title screen, I mean, look at the detail that went into this. It's just kind of mesmerizing. I mean, you think this was a big game from a big studio. I mean, we've got the sunbeams coming down, the leaves blowing, this amazing soundtrack. I mean, I mean, almost what this is my uh, desktop background. I'd love to have that. Even the the way they wrote Druid Stone there is pretty awesome. But anyway, we got a lot to cover. Oh, I, I should mention uh, before we move on. Uh, this is by Control Alt Ninja. So if you recall, the Grimrock games were by a company called Almost Human. Basically, what happened? The Almost Human guys, uh, I guess, as a company, weren't really interested in doing something else beyond uh, the Grimrock series. Uh, so a couple of them, including Yuho, split off, did their own company, Control Alt Ninja. So I think we got maybe two or three of the uh, almost human guys on this. But, you know, it's, it's a fairly different game. I don't even know if I would necessarily know, just from playing this, that it had anything to do with the, the Grimrock, uh, you know, teams. <laughs> it's a very different kind of game. But anyway, let's get into it. I'll show you some of the new game first, or some of the opening. Uh, and then we'll get forward and I'll show you some of the uh, later game because it's kind of important. Uh, like a lot of role-playing games, it does uh, gradually add on more mechanics, more characters, gets more complicated as you go along, uh, which is nice. Uh, with the difficulty, we have basically two options. We've got the, uh, or two sensible options. We have the normal mode, which is where I think you should probably play this. Uh, it is a fairly difficult game. Especially if you're trying to do the bonus objectives, also, which I'll talk about. I think there's plenty enough challenge here at the normal mode. Uh, there's a hard mode, I guess, if you just really want to punish yourself. <laughs> it's feeling really, really uh, like you're a super genius. Of course, there's also this wimpy, wussy mode, which, you know, I would not play that for uh, <laughs> obvious reasons. <laughs> uh, anyway, let's uh, get started with this. Now, it is a. A little bit cutesy, we would see at times, uh, not enough to make you think you're playing a JRPG. Uh, even though this little character, this little guy here, the uh, Oiko, I think's his name, does look like he's kind of straight out of an early Final Fantasy game to me. If you, if you remember that first Final Fantasy, the little mages, it kind of looks like that. Uh, but it doesn't, uh, it's not quite that cutesy. 
Uh, I'd just say it's got a few cute elements. <laughs> I don't know even why I'm going on about that. <laughs> Probably wouldn't bother most people, but you know, I, I tend to like a more serious role-playing game. Um, I'm just basically saying don't be turned off by this, uh, you know, this opening bit. Uh, it does. It's not a game that just uh, lampoons itself or some kind of parody or a kids' game. You know, it's quite a bit of a uh, in-depth role-playing mechanics here. Uh, anyway, another thing you'll notice is that there's no voice acting. Uh, some people that turns off, uh, especially if they, you know, sometimes uh, if you look at reviews, they'll say, you know, I can't believe I spent, you know, 30 bucks on this game. It doesn't even have uh, voice acting. <laughs> Something like that. Uh, but if you remember when I was talking to uh, Mr. Brent Knowles, a uh, Bioware guy, worked on everything from Baldur's Gate 2 to Neverwinter Nights and uh, Dragon Age Origins, uh, you know, he said that if you have full voice acting, that basically means 50% uh, less content. Uh, because of the just the nature of the beast, getting those uh, scripts, or getting those uh, those dialogues recorded, having to get everything locked down well before the game was released. <laughs> In order to do that, really kind of ties uh, the designers and the writers' hands. Uh, so really, I think in lots of ways you're better off. Not just that the uh, developer's got an easier job, uh, but as a player, you're better off with just having the text because it does mean that developer can go in and uh, make edits even up to the last minute. And even if they want to do a patch, you know, of course, it's relatively easy to make little corrections to the, uh, uh, the scripts running this game. So. <laughs> but uh, all of that said, the reason I like not having the voice actors is it gives me a chance to do my own little voice acting routines. I know you guys uh, get a kick out of that. I think it's uh, fabulous. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. I encourage you to do it as well, uh, you know, to do your own voice acting. So anyway, we got this little Whatever this thing is, I pretty far into the game. I think maybe uh, 12 to 15 hours. I'm not even really sure who this guy is, where he comes from. They kind of keep a lot of that stuff uh, mysterious. But I, I think he probably sounds something like this. <laughs> oh boy, oh boy. Are those truffle cats? They are. Just look at this. It's ridiculous. I'm in truffle cat heaven. The others are going to love this. After this, nobody's going to be calling me a... Uh... Whoa! Hey, back off before I fry the slime off of you. Don't say nobody warned you. Okay, and then he's going to be casting his uh, fire spells. Uh, we don't get to control him yet. We will. Uh, after this battle. Uh, I'm being mobbed by slugs? That's great. That's fantastic. Well, you ask for it. Help! <laughs> you see what? It's fun to do your own voice act. Now we have this green cloak man. Who's a, he's a pretty cool character. He's kind of this uh, ranger dude. Or warden, they call him. Uh, you get to name him, but by default, his name is Leon Hard. And we don't really know. He's got sort of this amnesia thing going. Seems to be this uh, force that's uh, kind of like uh, King Arthur. You know, I guess the idea is whenever the forest is in danger, this guy gets resurrected <laughs> to save the day. Uh, but this time he doesn't remember anything. Uh, so that's, that's kind of a fun uh, story element. But I'm imagining he probably sounds a little tougher uh, than Oiko over there. He's probably more like, There he is! Hey, you! What were you thinking running off like that? And here we go, here's our combat engine, and there's a lot to this. Uh, you know, it might look... You know, when I first saw this game, I thought it looked kind of casual. But it's actually a lot of in-depth uh, role-playing mechanics here. And I love, I love the flexibility, the versatility of this. Uh, a lot of games, you move first, and then you get to attack, and kind of a linear, you know, step-by-step -step, uh, linear process. Here, though, you can move a step, do your action, move some more. You know, you could, you could do your action first, then move. You know, it's just totally up to you, uh, which is nice. Uh, this blue zone is showing me basically where I can move. And the creatures do get opportunity attacks, if you're familiar with D&D. &D. And so if I try to scooch, uh, scooch past him, he'll get a free attack. <laughs> Not cool. Uh, but if you look here, uh, I don't think you can see where I'm pointing. <laughs> but he's got like a little flashing heart. 
So that's giving me a little preview of the damage he'll take if he tries to uh, scooch past. And that's what I was saying earlier, there's no dice rolling mechanic here, there's no random factor. Uh, this slug, if I hover over him, says he does one point of damage, he's got zero armor, three speed, so that's never going to change. He's never going to do more than one, uh, or he's, he's got three points of health there. And my guy, depending on the ability he uses, will do, say, three points of damage. It's not a range. Uh, so that's the point there. I'm kind of wondering, is this even a role-playing game, then? Since there isn't that dice rolling mechanic. It's got the hit points, it's got the leveling up, it's the armor. It's got everything else, just not the uh, the random <laughs> factor. Uh, so you might actually prefer that. It does give you a little bit more control. Uh, okay, so let me see what else there is to say about this. There is a... If I hover over the enemies, in this sort of uh, urine-colored zone, that's uh, where they can move, their range of movement. And, you know, I get my turn first, and then they get their turns. I haven't run into a situation yet where they get to move first. Uh, which is pretty cool. And uh, one one other thing, I, well, a couple other things. One is if I hit tab or just click on them, you'll notice I can control these characters in whatever order I want to as well. Uh, so there's no role for initiative, nothing like that. Uh, and then finally... Uh, this is what I really like about this game. I think this is probably the coolest bit. So my objective on this level is simply to defeat the enemies. And it's, there's going to be more slugs popping up. That's one of my things I don't like about this game, is that you're never sure. It's got this bad habit of dropping in more enemies as you play through the level. You're never really sure where they're going to pop up. Uh, unless you, I guess, play it multiple times. But anyway, it would be fairly easy to get through this, just kill the enemies. But the thing that makes it difficult is the bonus objective. So if I complete the mission without taking any damage, I get this uh, extra gold coin. Or get some extra money. That's actually very nice, because there's some nice gear to get. <laughs> and uh, just the one other thing, if I just complete the level, I get this crystal. And the crystals are really cool. Another really cool feature about this, you can put them in skills, you can put them in arms and armor, and you can change that up at any time. I don't think you can do it during a level, but uh, in between levels you can, you know, just try out combinations, see which abilities you like. Uh, it doesn't really lock you down uh, with your gym, so that's pretty cool. Alright, so let's see if I can do this. And I'm not going to lie to you, I, I spent probably two hours yesterday trying to figure out how to do this mission without taking any damage. I'm going to try to do it again, but I don't, <laughs> I'm not going to guarantee anything. I know the, the right idea. So if, you, if you're afraid about spoiling that, you might want to skip, the, skip this battle. Uh, otherwise, you can just see me uh, muddle through this. Okay, so anyway, nobody can take any damage, including this Red Priest. So what I can do, I can skip over here and try to uh, kill this slug just right off the bat. And then I will move him back over there, because I know there's going to be some more slugs appearing. I don't know if there's any method to where they appear. And here's my archer, and unfortunately she can only do... She can only do uh, two points of damage, so I can't quite kill one, but maybe I can start to kill it. She's also kind of my cleric character. Let's go ahead and end the turn there. I can count on him to cast. I think he just shoots at whatever's closest to him. Yeah, you see what I mean? Uh, guys, this is not looking good. Not good at all! No, it's not looking good at all. <laughs> Especially uh, since he can't take a single point of damage. But here's what I, I think is the key. So you notice I've got my skills down here. Regular attacks. This is kind of a first aid. What is it called? Bandage. It's actually a pretty cool feature. If you don't have anything else to do on your action point, with your action point, you can usually heal yourself or heal somebody else. Or if they get... Uh, people don't die in this game, they just uh, fall over, you can bring them back. Usually, though, that means you won't get your bonus objective. Uh, this is kind of a, a leap. I call it a charge. Gives them a little bit of extra movement. And this uh, shift is pretty cool, unless you evade the opportunity attacks. Or you could just use it to get one more point of uh, movement, and then you get your whirlwind here. Uh, but the one I want to focus on is this guard. 
So it says, until the start of next round, gain plus one bonus to armor and automatically attack the first enemy who moves to the adjacent squares. So if you notice, they only do one point of damage, and that gives me one point of armor. So I think you know where I'm going with this. <laughs> so I'm just going to park him right there in guard and just hope that that will do the trick. Now just with her, I'll go ahead and finish that slug off. I just want to be very careful of not getting in, getting her into range. Anybody. Just one hit is all it would take. <laughs> and she's got a dash, too. All right, let's see if this strategy works out. All right, got him, and then hopefully this won't do any damage. Look at me! <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm talking about. I love a game. You know, I probably could have looked that up and some discussion board or something and figured out the trick. Uh, but it's so much more satisfying if you don't do that. <laughs> it might, might be frustrating, but eventually when you find out the answer, you're just like, yeah, man. Rock on. So the rest of this ought to be pretty straightforward. Uh, go ahead and grab this gold. Uh, you don't get a looting period, or you don't automatically get the gold at the end, so you really should just uh, pick it up when you got the chance. Okay, and I'm sure that he will finish that one off, so let's go... Actually, she's still got her attack. <laughs> I can use my dash now. I mean, this is kind of a cool thing, too, since so you've got this necklace that will uh, rewind the, the mission back to the start. If you really mess up... Is that what it is? Yeah, rewind rewind time back to the beginning of your turn. Okay. Yeah, so if you got a bad turn, you also can just undo a move if you haven't used your action point yet. Uh, which is actually really, really useful. I wish every game had that. But, of course, you could also restart the mission from scratch, too. Well, let's go ahead and see. Hopefully this mage finish him off. Bada boom, bada bing, victory! <laughs> Full on. So you see, you get my one gem for defeating the enemies, and the gems are, to me, really what you want. Those are super important. Uh, the gold is okay. You know, there's usually some pretty cool items to buy. Got my XP. Oh, pretty awesome. Oh, Miss Tremble over a couple of mushrooms. A forest didn't used to be like this. All right, yes, you don't have to say anything. Perhaps I made a slight error in judgment. But I mean, look at these truffle caps, though. Mushrooms? <laughs> Mushrooms, are you serious? Listen, little man, this forest will kill you if you let it. Let's not get too dramatic here. We're all safe now. No harm done. Oh no, I'll be the bigger man. I apologize, I made a mistake. Thanks for the rescue, uh, sorry, uh, what is your name anyway? I mean, do you have one? Because, well, we just cut you out of a cocoon. And I don't know how it works with you cocoon people. <laughs> he's not cocoon people, he's the warden. Not really helping, but okay. <laughs> uh, so let's see. Protector of the forest. Created by the forest. Druid stuff. That's not my field. Anyway, do you have a name? Or... I told you. He's the warden. <laughs> right, okay. But is this what we... <laughs> That's a kind of a... You know, weird way to do this. Like a lot of these, a lot of JRPGs, you get to name these guys if you want. Uh, I don't know. I think Leon Hard. Leon Hard. <laughs> it's just a weird name. <laughs> Got kind of weird connotations. You might want to change it. I just leave it. I guess you could just call him uh, the Warden. Uh, anyway, you get the idea, right? He's. I think I told you earlier, he's. Uh, something's going wrong with the forest. It's all these. Uh, Stuff going on with the druids, uh, the occult, uh, this uh, red priest business circle. There's, there's a, you know, it's, a, it's a decent story. It's nothing. Uh, it's a, it, there's a few twists and turns. It's not like George R. R. Martin stuff. <laughs> you know, it works for me. Uh, but 
Now, the thing I like about it is the uh, uh, the sort of mild humor we get between these characters. So they do a lot of bantering back and forth uh, during the battles. It's kind of fun. It's a little bit like Jay Barnson's uh, Frayed Knights game. It's not quite meta like that. They're not making, uh, they're not breaking the fourth wall or anything. Uh, but you do get get some pretty fun interactions there. They're pretty good, uh, well drawn characters. And just about every one of these battles, there's no random encounters. Everything is kind of a set piece uh, with a fair amount of strategy involved. Now let's see. This one has special rules, uh, which is pretty common. I don't know, <laughs> not really so special, it seems like every level has some special rules. See, beware, this area is infested with the cancer. You have seven rounds to destroy the cysts until the cancer fully manifests, and uh, completing the mission becomes more difficult. Each destroyed cyst delays the cancer by one round. The mission ends immediately when the last cyst has been destroyed, so that's a little bit of a clue. A lot of these levels is kind of unrealistic because you'll be there's just no way to defeat all the enemies. You're kind of surrounded by them. But if you know what will finish the level, you can, you know, still manage to get out of there somehow without dying. Uh, the spell books are uh, probably going to be useful to you. A lot of these abilities will have like a one by it. That just means they're one off. I use it one time during the mission. That's it. Unless I get to the spell book, and it's it's not just for spells. It's for any ability for the mission. And it's free action means you don't have to waste your action point on it. So I could, for example, use this. Uh, uh, what is this? The shift. I could use, uh, say, the shift one time, then somehow get back there and recharge it. Probably most useful for my uh, mage. Uh, he's got three of these fire blast spells, but. You know, that'd actually be better for my uh, cleric there, because she can get an extra heal spell. Okay, let's see. I gotta destroy the cysts, and we can hold down the alt button to see where those are. One, two, this one's surrounded by wasps. The infernal hum of this living war machine is the first and only warning to get up its painful sting. Yeah, I hate wasps. I don't know if you, have you ever been stung by a wasp. I used to call them red wasps back in uh, Louisiana. They're a lot more plentiful there. Those things, I've been stung by these bastards many times and I can tell you it just hurts just wouldn't believe how bad these things hurt uh, once they sting you that's just like one I can't imagine getting uh, stung by two or three that would be truly terrible although my uh, one of my grandpa's is just insane man he would see these wasps just grab them with his, in his fist and crush them and I, I saw him do that one time I was like you know, grandpa what didn't it sting you? And he's like, yeah, it stung me. He's like pulling out the stinger. <laughs> Not, I just like, man, this guy is a badass grandpa. It's totally tough. I think it was some kind of Sergeant Moore, too. Uh, anyway, I'll never forget that. That freaked me out. <laughs> I never questioned his orders. Let me put it that way. Uh, okay. Uh, so we got a couple of slugs. Let's see. Destroy the cyst. Bonus objectives. Open up all the chests, which I'd probably want to do anyway. Now, although the the chests are kind of sucky in one what the one way you don't really get loot out of these chests all you get is something you can use for the mission kind of a magic item that you have to use it or lose it but if I open them up I get a bonus gem or crystal that will be key and then I get a little uh, coinage if I complete the mission without any knockouts uh, so maybe we can pull this off uh, let's see what we can do. Uh, my mage is kind of fenced in there, so I probably want to move. See what I can hit. No. Nope. So that's kind of nice, too. It shows me my range. Let's go ahead and hit the cyst. Only one point. It's got a point of armor. Now that's not very <laughs> useful. I guess that one point might come in handy. I need to get her some better weapons, so that's for sure. So she ought to be able to move there, I think. These wasps got a lot of movement. But I think she'll be okay there. Now this guy is my tank. He's got the most health, so if anybody's going to get in there in melee range, it probably should be him. And uh, one other thing is this charge. It's cool. It says it uh, pushes the target one square. So if you can line everything up just right, I'm pretty sure that's immovable. It doesn't say, but 
If you like these slugs, if you can line them up just right, knock them into one another, you do an extra point of damage. And, you know, just one point of damage can be a big, a big deal in this game. You know, like any role-playing game, if most of, I played anyway, if something's got one hit point left, it can still do full damage to you. So I'm gonna see if I can do a little recharge here. Oh, I don't think I've mentioned this yet, the focus. So you get one of these focuses per turn, and that basically lets you, uh, basically powers up a spell. But I think I should probably save it for next round. See, like the focus, if I... It says focused on this, uh, force bolt, attack up to three separate targets. Or my favorite is this fireball, or fire. So that'll turn it from just hitting one monster into a, basically a very powerful AoE. That's four damage across the three by three square. So that's probably what I would like to do. Uh, so I'll tell you what I think I'm going to do here is just cast my fireball, just a regular fireball on that. And get over here. Let me see if I can do this. See if I can go ahead and focus. And then grab another focus. Yep. <laughs> Okay, that's pretty cool. <clears throat> so I think everybody else is good, hopefully. <clears throat> He's gonna take a little damage, but as long as they don't get knocked out, I should be okay. Wait! Do you feel that? Prepare yourselves! The enemy's coming! I almost kinda wanna voice him like a Bruce Campbell. <laughs> Yeah, I would definitely get Bruce Campbell. Okay, let's see. Let's try the powerful fireball. Oh, <laughs> bummer. <laughs> Can't quite squeeze them all in. It always seems like I never can just get that lined up perfectly. Now here's the hearts to give you, obviously, another heart, but this action point, really cool if I can get that. Just lets me, uh, I don't know if I, I might have enough. I don't think I've got quite enough movement to get over there. But if I could, I could cast another spell. No target too far. But that, you know, as it says, lets you basically take another turn. Now I do have this whirlwind, and that would go all the way around. But uh, thankfully, never gets around it. But again, if you're thinking very tactically, you could try to get him into the, the center of a maelstrom. I <laughs> can't reach that either. I guess I could shift over of it. Where's the other cyst? Oh, I guess it must be down in there. Okay, let's see. I don't really want to waste that free mo free turn. Let's see, what can I do? The water will make me move slower, but I guess it might be worth it here. So she ought to be able to take two turns next time. Get him moved down. Uh, another very, very useful spell is this teleport. So he can swap out with a creature. I think it's just, I think he can swap out with barrels and things too. But there's a lot of levels where that comes in very, very handy indeed, especially if you're trying to keep people from taking damage. Because he can cast a shield on himself, teleport in, swap out, uh, a character in trouble or whatever. Or just use it to, to move further. I don't think I want to do that here. But he can do that once per turn. I can't think of any reason to do it now, so I'll just... The only thing is that she's still got a, an action point I haven't used. So what I think I'll do is just go ahead and use my dash. So I can open up this chest. <laughs> And she found some dynamite. And that's a 3x3, 5-point damage AoE. Pretty cool. So let's go ahead and end that. And this uh, red circle just means that there's going to be another enemy pop up, popping up in there. I've only got 7 rounds to kill these uh, cysts, but I think I can probably do it. Uh, the centipede. The acid dripping from its mandibles makes this critter more than just a nuisance. Doesn't say it, but I'm pretty sure he could give me a disease. That's two points of damage, one point of armor. And he's 
slow, let's go ahead and uh, whack him with uh, <laughs> Leon Hard. And then I don't probably don't want to use my dynamite. And then with him. No, I'm gonna have to use my another fire to really take him out. And I can't even reach over there and grab that. Yeah, see the water just eats up all my movement. Now what I can do... I don't see any special reason <laughs> just to... Oh, I can't even do that anyway. Alright, I guess I'll just go on over there. I'll get it next turn. And I'll go ahead and get him in position. Get her in position, grab that gold. Hell yeah. Okay, nothing happened in between the turns. I can't quite... This will be tricky. I like to get that... This action point. Uh, I'll just hold off on his turn. Let's see. I think I'll be able to take this cyst out. Definitely don't want to waste my dynamite. Ah, oh, this is driving me crazy, that uh, action point just sitting there. Yeah, this is pretty cool. The undo the move. You see that? So if you do accidentally click the wrong place, now you can undo it. The, the one thing that's, that's ter terribly bad about this interface, though, uh, sometimes you'll be in a... You know, you'll do something like this, and you say, oh, I don't want to do that, and you'll hit escape uh, to get out of that. If you accidentally hit escape twice, it will actually restart the mission. And that happened to me numerous times, and sometimes these missions can get, you know, pretty involved, and it really sucks when you're, like, on the third stage of a mission, you accidentally <laughs> click that twice, and you're back. <laughs> uh, so they need to put, like, a, one of those, Are you sure? <laughs> Are you freaking sure you want to do that? <laughs> you dumbass. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and see what's see what's down in this crypt. I oh, can't quite get over there. Well, you know what? I am not leaving that gym behind. I'll just stay here. You'll be okay. Can't quite reach that anyway. All right, the thing is almost down. I think we should be able to finish that. Nope. Oh. We got some reinforcements coming in right on top of the gym. Okay. I wish there was something useful I could do. You know what? I guess I could do this. Use that bandage. Get over there. And here's how the teleport can work. Get him a little bit further away from whatever is going to pop up there. Although we still got the useless, uh... <laughs> He's just going to have to squander his action. <laughs> oh wait, maybe I can move her down. Trigger whatever's down here. Well, that worked, I guess. <laughs> I got skeletons. <laughs> but he can't reach him. Ah! Okay. What would an RPG be without skeletons? Ooh, what is this? Gelatinous. Can fly over pits and low obstacles, does not perform opportunity attacks. Let's see. It's got a distance attack. Yeah, a range of five. So I guess we could try to... I suppose. Let him deal with that. Get my mage down here. See, I can focus this uh, force bolt. Oh, look at that. But here's a little trick. So what I can do is teleport him there. And then use the force bolt. Yeah, I love stuff like I like that you're kind of thinking about things. And what is that over? <laughs> ah, already getting to kill some rats. Oh, oh, oh. 
think that's you nasty skeleton? Yeah, she's still got a little health left. And look at that, I can get right on top of that heart. You know, I could shift him around, but... You know, it might actually be useful to go ahead and shift him a little bit. I don't know if that thing's gonna follow me, though. Let's just leave him there. Maybe he'll get an opportunity to attack if he tries to move away. We've got a pressure plate, <laughs> we've got plague rats, we've got chests, we've got spell books. I mean, you know, I'm sorry, if you don't like this game, you just don't like role playing games. Shock. I wonder how do I. So all I gotta do is destroy the cyst to win the level. Got three rounds to do it. That might get a little bit iffy. You know, because I gotta get in there and defeat the cyst. See what's going on with this these pressure plates. Oh, that opened up some more of these skeletons. They got the bows. Those are the nasty ones. And these plague rats, I'm pretty sure they do give you some kind of uh, disease. Uh, let me think about that. She's got dynamite, but. I wonder if the dynamite would be more effective on these rats. <laughs> I kind of like the idea of getting that dynamite into that little room, though. You know what? Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, swap them out. All I gotta do is step off that plate, and then they won't be able to uh, look at that perfect. I'll swap them off the uh, plate. Could she get to that heart? Not quite. It's got a little bit of movement, though. The question is, can I safely leave that thing behind? I kind of want to kill it, but I guess the mission needs to take priority. I don't think it's going to get close enough for me to use my guard on it, so I'm just going to try to get as far as I can. And I can match him up for a point. Boom. Yeah, this thing's got incredible range. Okay, back to me. That's a, you know, another thing I like it, you know, you know, I, I don't sit through these long, boring animations every time, watch the monster slowly <laughs> shuffle into position. You know, it, it's it's got a good pacing to it. Okay, who do I want on the platform? That's basically the question. So let's go ahead and put him on there first, maybe. I'd like to grab one of those hearts, but you know, I think it would be better just to go ahead and ding this thing. Okay, now I need to swap them out. Good, he can finish off one of the rats! <laughs> First rat kills! <laughs> Take that. And I can't teleport in. And I'm out of movement. Let's see, I don't know if she's got any abilities that need to be recharged. I guess she could recharge her uh, dash, maybe. Let's see, do I want to do this? <laughs> I guess we'll find out. So I could dash her in there. She won't be able to take the... Uh, the chest, but she can grab the heart. Rat's gonna do some damage to her, but I think she'll be all right. One last thing, let's prepare him a health point. I mean, keep in mind, this is like the second battle. Look at the level of complexity I'm dealing with here. We must hurry. The cancer is almost here. See, she's got a disease. The disease, the disease is not that bad, just means she can't, uh, Recover health by any means. It's got a three-round ticker on it. Man, 
Man, this guy's just going nowhere fast. Might almost be better. You know, I might actually be better off just teleporting. Now let's just see what she can do. Yeah, I gotta kill this thing in one round, so... It's kinda now or never. He... Let's see, can I even do that much damage to it? This is getting iffy. The cancer comes in one round. I do not like this. I probably spent too long. I'm trying to think if there's any way I can get this guy over to do his damage. Uh, she's only going to do one point. This guy uses his uh, bolts, he'll do three. Three, four. Now you see I've got to use him. Because he does three. See, I don't know of any way I can do this actually. <laughs> I think I'm screwed. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure this is just going to be the end. Oh well, we'll try it. Oh man. She'll take some damage running out of there. Yeah, see I can't even target through that. Oh, what I wouldn't do for just one more turn, you know? Not gonna be enough. Let's just see. Maybe... Maybe I'll get another round. I don't know if that means it's over next round or I get one more turn. Let's see. Let him move. Oh, bloody roots, we are doomed! going on? The Druid Stone Shard. One of you has it. Give it to me or I'll take it from your corpse. That foe is far too powerful for us. Let's concentrate on destroying the cysts. Excellent! <laughs> I thought I was literally doomed. It's just figurative. Okay, we got a rat there we need to deal with. Go ahead and hit that son of a gun. With the force bolts. And, uh, finish it off there. Okay, get him inside. Gotta grab that chest. It's so tricky. <laughs> okay, he's still got his... Action point. Found a crystal. Ah, oh, gives me a recharge one ability. I can recharge my shift. Oh, it's gonna have to do it. wait one more turn. Yeah, that thing. No, oh, it's lots of spawning. Yeah, I've played levels before where these things are just spawning so many monsters, but, you know, again, as long as you finish the mission, you instantly get out of there, so you don't have to worry about mopping up afterward. <clears throat> Although, I was reading, some people like to just get the XP. Alright, let's finish this mission. I think we've got everything. One more thwack ought to do it. Booyah! done and I mean these guys maintain this level of intensity throughout this game too I mean mission after mission after mission I mean you really feel like you you want to dance yourself when you get to these especially if you've had to do the level like four or five times to to get it all right I think we're still on the introductory stuff too we haven't even gotten to the mission proper the forest creatures they aren't supposed to be so aggressive are they 
What, do all the animals usually attack everything all the time? Their purple boils just grow everywhere? You really are out of it, aren't you, big guy? Hush, he's still catching up. It's not his fault. Right, right, he's a cocoon guy. <laughs> all of it's being caused by the cancer. So pretty familiar, uh, there's a few little, you know, a few little twists and turns here, but we got a pretty good, good old traditional fantasy story, complete with magical items. Here comes another cutie kawasa, what do you call it, kawasi <laughs> element? <laughs> Look, a shido! So they just go queep, queep, and there's probably a plush. How much you want to bet the uh, guys over there, Club Ninja, already have a plush, <laughs> creepy, <laughs> sitting there on their, on their desktops? I guess it's kind of cute. I mean, do you do you want a queep? Would you like a queep? <laughs> that's kind of. I don't know how that sounds. Uh, hey, nice queep. Who queeped? Uh, I love getting letters. Yeah, so this is basically the mechanic that. Uh, yeah, we could, we could name him. Uh, this is basically the mechanic to get more missions, and I'll show you that in a minute. I thought it meant you actually got messages from somebody. That kind of confused me. It's it's from Varton. <laughs> Varton. You know, they were probably thinking, uh, Barton couldn't put me in directly, so they had to put me in as Varton. <laughs> I guess it's better than Farton. Farton Varton. That was my... Nickname in high school. Uh, Bloody Roots, my father, they need our help. Okay, so I think we're finally... No, do we have another mission? <laughs> well, I mean, it's quite a bit of a story here at the beginning. You know, so we kind of walked in on Oiko finishing up a joke, the punchline. And here are the, the circle of druids, all dead. And our scout here has lost her father, Martin Eustaff. It's unthinkable. By ancient pacts and, pacts and traditions, the sanctuary is off limits. I don't know how much of this I want to spoil for you. I mean, you can <laughs> obviously play the game <laughs> and read all this stuff. Although it is fun doing uh, the voices. But uh, the sorceress, the sorceress. Yes, there's a sorceress. <laughs> of course, there's a sorceress. <laughs> oh, she's a kind of a mythical figure, mysterious, powerful, maybe insane. <laughs> sounds, like, <laughs> sounds like a lot of my exes. <laughs> uh, some stories say she appears and disappears like a ghost. Oh, good. <laughs> so, so, so <laughs> I honestly didn't think she was real. Again, kind of like, okay. Uh, she's real. She was here. And she wanted the Arch Druid and his daughter. But you are on your mission. And he was in Zorath Cave, working on his research. We would never betray your father. Uh, but all relief to fight her. So much blood. It's always so much blood. Rowland, Rowland wasn't here, right? And we've got a bit of a, a little bit of a romance factor. Love, betrayal. <laughs> she has your father. No, no, this will not stand. The sorceress won't get away with this. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> Look around you. She just did all of this. You think we can... What? We well, can try to set things right. We can face her. Yes, thank you. No, no, you, you can't. She wants you, too. Barton, the last thing I will do is hide. 
This is no time to let your emotions decide. <laughs> I'm gonna stop you right there, Vartan. Yes, he's my father and I want him back. Obviously. But that's not what this is about. She took him. She took the Arch Druid. Think about it. Really ponder. Can you think of a single reason for doing so that doesn't make you want to soil your robe? <laughs> oh, the soiling of the robes. And not to rub it in. The druids can't rescue him. You're scholars and mystics, not adventurers. Certainly not fighters. You know, it's almost like this is building up to the idea that we have to deal with the sorceress. <laughs> <laughs> rescue her father. <laughs> it's all, it's it's kind of weird. It's the sort of feeling I'm getting there. Like, it might be coming to that. Uh, skipping right past the awkwardness, how can we find the Ark Arch Druid? We will send word to our agents, but first we must see to the survivors. Excuse me a moment. Druids are kind of weird with their they never take their masks off. So what's our next step? The timing of all this. The forest sending you here now. No way, that's a coincidence, right? He's the warden. He's supposed to fix this, right? I don't know anything about that. So like I was saying, he's, I guess normally when this warden shows up, he's all he's got all his powers, he's got all his skills. <laughs> but that wouldn't be much fun to have a godlike character running around, so... You know, of course he's got amnesia, he's kind of weak, we'll have to level him up. So I think this is probably the most text you'll see in the game. Usually they get you up and running pretty quick. Uh, this is... Gan. Gan? 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 This is Gan. This is Gan. He's... Well, he's my new right hand. A bit of a field promotion, I'm afraid. His previous right hand was cut off. <laughs> Yikes! <laughs> yeah, so the new uh, druid assistant. Choose the name. Uh, it's a, yeah, just really nice artwork on this. I like the. You know, the sort of drawings for the characters are good. The, I mean, this just looks, you know, fantastic. I don't know if they did this in Unity or what. It just looks really good. <laughs> May the forest protect you. May the forest protect you. Okay. <clears throat> so, yep. Yeah, we got mail. And again, I thought that was saying there's some kind of messages. This <laughs> journal. <laughs> it's like, like clicking all over, kept looking at the settings. Finally. Uh, I finally went online and asked the guys. That's a good thing about this uh, this team. They're very quick to respond. You know, if you got a question. I was able to find that out pretty quick. i uh, just using the uh, Steam discussions. Okay, so it looks like I don't have my store yet. Later on, uh, I guess there's a mission here to get... There's a guy down here that you can buy things from. Uh, but you will, need, you will have a need for that <clears throat> goal pretty quickly. But you can see if I click on these guys, well, I can get a look at their abilities, and you can, you know, obviously don't have these yet. But there's little uh, slots inside some of the, some of the equipment, some of the abilities. And what that lets you do is basically empower it. And instead of just making it, you know, do more damage or something, usually there's a little tactical element. Either like you can use it again in a battle, uh, you can give it more range, or recover health on a kill with a charge. Uh, Pyrrhus ignores a piece of armor, which, you know, there's a lot of armored stuff in the game, so that's more useful than you might think. And the cool thing about this is, it's not permanent. So if you're having a tough time in a mission, you could just abort the mission, change up your gems, you know, figure out where you really want, you know, what's really going to be important for that mission. Or if you find a new item, you don't have to worry about sacrificing your, your gems. So you could think, do I want more range? Do I want to ignore part of a point of armor? Uh, do I want an extra time to use focus? That's usually the where, where I've been putting my points, just 
You know, having that powered up fu uh, fire spell is incredible. I get three uses, which is pretty good. Now this is yet another little catch. So you have to put two gems into that, but that basically ups the power of fire even more. So it'll do uh, five points of damage. And a lot of creatures are five points, or five or under, so that's really where I want that to be. But I've only got the two gems at the moment, so I might just go with an extra point of focus. <clears throat> you know, the nice thing here, too, is uh, I can use Force Bolt infinite number of times. So if I up the piercing on that, that would actually you know, be something I could use a lot. Something else I think about, too, is, you know, how much use will I get out of that? It's not much, you know, you might, you know, one firebolt that does five points of damage versus something I can use turn after turn. Uh, let's see, revive. So this is kind of neat, too. So if you have to revive somebody, if you take this, put a gem there, they'll come back with two extra points, which, considering they just died, they're probably in a really bad location. So that might be well worth it. Uh, let's see, what do... Where do I want to put my other gem? So many possibilities. I kind of like the idea of recovering health on a kill. This is something else I was kind of curious about. So when you guard, you know, it has that ring or, or that circle around it. Uh, so any enemies or any uh, friends next to me will get this extra point of armor. But that means I have to keep everybody kind of bunched up. Uh, for that to be effective, but you know, it does say allies, which is kind of nice. So I guess that would include even NPCs that just happen to be around me. <laughs> this is a certain level <laughs> where that would be very nice. Now, but I think for now, I'm just gonna go with the. I think I give her bow a little extra range, maybe. Ah, I can't decide. <laughs> Sometimes you <laughs> just have to move on. Uh, okay, so I think that's probably enough of the early game. You notice I can click here and get some options for where I want my next mission to be. There's no... You know, this game doesn't do the, like, characters are traveling from one location to other to another and you get the random encounter thing. There's really basically just two choices. Or I could keep redoing. I could redo this any one of any part of that again if I wanted to maybe I didn't get it completely right the first time I could go in and do it again it will give me a 50% uh, XP penalty but you know you still get some XP so I guess if you're really struggling or you're really close to the next level you could just repeat it a few times so okay, Imnia Wood or so with this mission I get one gem and some gold this one I get uh, two gems and two golds. <laughs> so, you know, this is probably going to be a more complicated mission than this one. Let's go ahead and open this up. And now I'll skip to my later game. <laughs> this guy and this giant egg. <laughs> you know, a lot of nice little custom animation, too. I know they're knocking on the egg. And these guys, uh, I mean, they, you know, I think they've they've really paid attention to detail. There's lots of subtle things in here that they've done to enhance enhance this uh, engine they've built. They, you know, I think done a really bang up job on it. You know, all the missions too feel feel really you uh, feel really good. You know, nothing feels. Uh, half-assed, or just there to kind of fill up time. Uh, none of the levels feel sloppy. I guess it's all real tightly designed. Let's see if I can get past this. Uh, <laughs> for some reason I keep clicking on the missions. <laughs> like the one or two missions that have a lot of text. <laughs> okay, let's... Yeah, oh my god, this was one. I don't think I was ever able to... I think I, it took me like four... Uh, at least two hours to actually get all this done. So all I have to really do is get Fenros to the exit. But I get a bonus objective if I kill one of these basilisks. But these things are really tough. They're slow, which is nice. If they get close enough, they can uh, make me immovable. 
or petrified. I got a ton of health. All I have to do is kill one of them, though. And then over here, I've got a wasp nest that'll keep spitting out wasps every turn. Now, there's a barrel of dynamite there, which will, you know, kill any, basically kill anything around it, but you notice it's kind of in the corner, so I'd have to be... Uh, one trick would be to get Oiko, you know, within range of that. Put him where I want the barrel to be, and then I could teleport, uh, you know, swap out with, with uh, this barrel of dynamite. Also need to open up all the chests. So I'm not going to do this one, because this one took me all day. There's even a... Uh, pressure plate there that would open, I suppose, open this gate to get the chest, so a lot of uh, fine tactics here, and you really don't want these uh, basilisks to get up on you, because once they do, uh, like I say, petrification and pretty good damage. Alright, so I think that's enough of this early game. Now let me shift over, I'll show you where I, where I ended up later. All right, so I got my main game here 16 hours in. Wow, does <laughs> 16 hours. <laughs> As you can see, I got most of these completed all the way. There's a couple that were just too hard or, you know, I thought maybe I'll level up a little bit and then come back and see if I can do it. The, uh, I don't think the monsters get tougher. So that is an option if you're just really struggling. Uh, some of these levels are actually puzzles. Uh, which I always like this, if you have a... You know, my wife loves to do puzzles in games. Uh, so sometimes when I get to these, I just, you know, call... Hey, Elizabeth, come here, there's a puzzle level. She gets all excited. Doesn't like combat, uh, but loves doing the, the puzzles. So let's just take a look at this. I haven't done this one yet. So I might end up looking like a doofus. You get a pretty good idea of the design. I think these uh, Grimrock slash Control-Alt-Ninja guys are really good at their puzzle designs. By the roots. The atmosphere in here. <laughs> I can feel my hair crackling. Man, what would that be like for your hair to crackle? I am Thor. My hair crackles. I can't even look at it directly. It's just too bright. How can we possibly get through this? I don't know if you guys can hear the music on this, but I just love this sort of... I mean, the production values on this game to me are just astronomical. Uh, the music in particular and the artwork is... What was that? Oh, tiny fleshling, thou hast arrived. Quick now, gone soon. Prithee, halt thy scurring. Scurring? <laughs> That's going okay till I hit that word. Hear me well, for I crave a boon. A dozen trinkets, each primed to quell heavenly fire. Bring me these, and yonder treasure thou shalt acquire. Gained three dispel bombs. He gave us three. Now these are some kind of bombs. I guess he wants us to bring back a dozen of them. Interesting. So what is this? Dispel a magical field within three squares. Okay. Oh, crap. <laughs> I didn't mean to do that. Okay, well, we just hit the button to restart. So what's... I wonder if this is all just done with this one character. So if I hit this lightning arc, instantly kill. Can he hit... Can he really reach anything with it? Hmm. So I'm guessing the sarcophagus... Stone coffin. Hmm. Let's try that. Out of range. Oh, so he's got to be... Yeah. How does this work? <laughs> Dispel a magical field, so he can't just move, huh? No. 
Spell a magical field within three squares. How's that supposed to? Why can't he move? <laughs> okay. Huh. That's, I don't see any... Uh, well, let's just try it out. Well, that did a whole lot of nothing. Now I can move. Now something's weird about that. Oh, okay. I guess he can move. I don't know what was happening before. Okay. Let's see about spelling that one. Well, it didn't work. But... The lightning stream here is too powerful. These bombs can't affect it. They even got the right <laughs> effect. <laughs> okay, so I obviously have to get through this. Ooh, that's a heck of a puzzle, too. It looks like that's an obvious one. Oh man, I guess you gotta be right on top of it. Didn't it say within three squares? I don't know if that's. I guess it does have to be right on top of it. To make it sound like it could be three squares away. Guardian statue. We are at that command. I and my brothers shall obey. Yet we hear each order but once. Think, then make thy play. Thou hast two dispel bombs remaining. What now? What now? <laughs> we are at the command. I and my brothers shall obey. We hear each order but once. Think, then make thy play. I was doing okay until I got to the think part. <laughs> so, give us a dispel bomb. Double the number of bombs we carry. Get a bomb for each dispel lightning arc. Dispel the neighboring lightning arcs or leave. Okay, let me. I assume I need to get to each one of these brothers or guardian statues. See one of my options again. Uh, I, could just, I could just dispel that one that one, so I'm going to need more bombs, obviously. Spell the neighboring lightning arcs. So really I only need this one removed, so that's not it. I could just get an extra bomb. Double the number of bombs we carry. Huh. That sounds like that would be the best option, right? Otherwise, I'm just getting... Why would I want to... Okay. So otherwise, I just get one bomb. Let's try the double. Okay, now... Disable that one. I guess I should say, there's a bit of a spoiler here, I suppose, if you're not following along with me. I'm just figuring this out as I go along. But, you know, you can always skip it if you don't want to see the answer. <laughs> Assuming I get to it, I'm not going to do this again and again, so <laughs> if I don't get it right the first time, we just, uh, it won't be a spoiler. Okay, so same options. Doesn't look like I can select the same option, so I can only do each option one time. Ooh, boy. All right, so I got three of these left. So I could go there, there, and get to this one. Or there, there, and get to that one. And I'm supposed to get 12 bombs total for this mission. So I'm thinking the, this one about get the bomb for each dispelled lightning arc. That probably goes with this, to spell the neighboring lightning arcs. So I'm going to need to do that at some point, and it would need to be maxed out. I don't see anybody. This one's only got two arcs, so I wouldn't want to wait till I got to him to use it. I think maybe this would be a, a good spot to use that option. All 
Although, wait a minute. Yeah, the lightning. It will eliminate one that I have to go through. Let's try. I'm almost wondering if I shouldn't have started with that. Yeah, maybe I should have used the double the number of bombs we carry, like, last. <laughs> I, think I, I think I messed that up. You probably end up with, like, six, and then you double it. Let's just play this out. Yeah, give us the dispel bomb. See right there, if I had that double option still, I could have I could have got the six, and then I would have I'd be good. Let's see, get a bomb for each dispelled. Why don't we just leave him alone for the moment? Oh, what's this? I can't. Oh, I can't get over there. That's that's the deal. So I could either go th that way or this way. So I'm guessing this is the right way. It's going to take at least one, two, three to get to him. If I give us a dispel bomb. Let's just try this. No, you can't do the corner. I got a bad feeling. <laughs> this is not the right answer. <laughs> uh, uh, yep, just nine, so I definitely should have waited on the, the double. But, anyway, I guess that's fine. I don't want to spoil the puzzle anyway. You probably have figured it out <laughs> by this point. <laughs> that's a pretty good example, though, of the kind of puzzles uh, that you get. Uh, so, anyway, I think that's a... I think that's a pretty good uh, overview. <clears throat> Let's get back here. I'm trying to get back to the main menu there. Abort. Yeah, so you can see what, like there's quite a bit of stuff later on in the game. And we have the store here, you can buy all kinds of neat items. A lot of this stuff is not, again, one of the things I love about this, it's not just, oh, this does another point of damage. A lot of them come with uh, multiple abilities that really change up your tactics. It's always, a, that's, that's what you want in a game like this. You don't want just doing more damage, uh, better armor. Uh, you want stuff that changes up the, the gameplay to keep it fresh. And this game does a great job of that. And you know, just about every item you can get from this store has some kind of uh, tactical use. Like this, moving does not provoke opportunity attacks. So you could really sort of, you know, double down on that, make sure everything benefits uh, from not, you know, being uh, moving around all the time. Very movable character. You could probably combine this with some other item or ability that involved uh, movement. See, I'm not sure how many gems I have total at this point, but see I have a lot of uh, gems uh, distributed throughout. Also I have this extra character. <laughs> I guess that's a minor spoiler there. As you can see, he's kind of a rogue ninja character. Uh, Makazuki. She's actually possessed, but that's another story. Uh, anyway, a lot of uh, great stuff here. I just really love this game. I think they've just, you know, knocked this one out of the park. It's not going to be for everybody, you know, it's not like it's uh, Baldur's Gate style where you've got lots of travel time in between places, you know, it's, it's, I'm trying to think of games to compare this to, uh, I'm kind of having a hard time with it, you know, like I said, there's the sort of elements of uh, different games we've played here, uh, the fact that there's no real dice rolling mechanics makes it feel almost more like a strategy game. At least in terms of the combat than the a traditional role play game where you would have to factor in well I <laughs> character keeps missing or sometimes the enemies miss you know in this game the enemy will only miss if you use uh, something like this uh, dodge you know so that's kind of interesting it gives it a slightly different feel uh, almost more like a board game and these are uh, cards you know some people were saying this is kind of like a, one of those card uh, card what do they call them the CCGs card collectible games <laughs> I never really, uh, I play a little Magic the Gathering, that's about as far down that 
road as I've gone, it doesn't really feel anything like playing Magic the Gathering to me, at least. Uh, I guess you could compare it in some ways. Uh, but anyway, all in all, I really like this. Graphics, awesome. Music, really, really nice, catchy. Uh, you know, just looking at this, I would almost kind of reminds me of uh, some of the heroes of the uh, Might and Magic series. I right, just look at this map, just gorgeous. You know, I haven't even got up in here to this stuff yet. I guess there's some little stone hinges. You know, the replay value is good. You know, again, if you don't like this mission here, I wasn't able to get the extra gems. So I could go back in there and replay that. That's fine. So I don't really know, I don't really have anything negative to say. It's like they've really subtracted out a lot of the tedious stuff with the uh, turn-based game. The combats are quick. Uh, you do get frustrated sometimes if you get all the way to the end of a mission and then suddenly, whoops, you know, the druid died, so now i got to replay the mission or I don't get my bonus. But, you know, that's just kind of, just makes it all the more rewarding when you finally do figure it out. Uh, I don't know if you have to do every mission. I'm pretty sure you could skip some of these if you just want to get to the, to the story missions. I'm actually kind of curious if it shows you which ones are story missions. Guarantee. It says that on all of them. Yeah, I'm not really sure which tells you which ones are critical to finish the game or not. Uh, but anyway, there you go. Druid Stone, uh, the Forest of Men here. Really spectacular game. I think this is definitely well worth the money. Uh, I really can't say enough nice things about it. Uh, you know, some of the... I was thinking, too, a lot of guys uh, message me and they'll ask for... You know, what's a good game to play? I liked this back in the day, but now I'm a grown-up. <laughs> you know, a wife and kids and a job. You know, back in the day when I was 15, 16 years old, I would uh, wake up in the morning, play a, a game all day long into the wee hours of the night. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> next day the same thing. I don't, don't really have that time to dedicate. You know, I even get guys uh, telling me that they won't even try a game that's been considered addictive because they're too afraid that, uh, you know, that I guess it might be too hard for them to uh, uh, you know, skip work or something. I, I don't know what, what the deal is with that. Uh, but the way this game is set up, you know, you could do one of these missions like the Trial of Lightning. You know, you could save it, come back to it later. Um, you know, you might say, well, I got an hour, I could knock out a mission or two. You know, it's very conducive to that. Uh, the only thing it won't let you do is save in the middle of a mission. Uh, so if you, you know, if you're down to the last monster, but you haven't completed the mission yet, and you have to go, you know, I guess you're kind of screwed there. Actually, I think I, I misspoke just then. You know, I think I misspoke. I think it will even let you, uh, I've already completed this mission. <laughs> so it won't let you just com repeat the mission over and over again. Didn't realize that. Let's just see. I want to see what happens if I try to save in the middle of a mission. Just so I don't give me any wrong information. Blah, blah, blah. This was a really tough one if I... This is what I was thinking. I think it was a little faster if you had the space bar. It would be kind of nice if, they didn't, if there was an option to skip this. And there, there might be. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> like, that is the sign of a great designer, right? You know, every time I think of something like, wouldn't it be great if it had a way to skip this? Oh, there it is. There's the option. Didn't even know it was there until I needed it. It escaped a couple times. And boom, there it is. Okay, so let's just say I was in the middle of this. And I had to go. All right, save and exit. Okay, let me continue. I want to see if it puts me right back where I was or if I have to restart the mission. Nope, there we go. Uh, so really, the only thing we can't do is... I don't think I can save and then... You know, I'm trying to think save scumming, basically. So I could save and exit. So maybe you could do a little save scumming. I don't know. But anyway, I'm not going to get into that. <laughs> I'll probably re-equip. Oh, I didn't know you could... I wonder if you could re-equip it, uh... Okay. Surely that's not an option. Yeah, re-equip. I wonder if that... Let's go ahead and use my action point. I bet it won't let me re-equip now. No? So you mean I can re-equip in the middle of a... 
I don't remember seeing that. Hang on. I'm gonna end the turn just to see if I can still re-equip after the first turn. I bet you that's the catch. You can see these these uh, enemies all move quickly. Again, doesn't. I guess some of these animations take a few seconds, but it doesn't just keep you waiting. I like those old games where you go have a cup of coffee, come back, and it's still the enemy's still taking its turn. Yeah, so there's a re-equip option. And let me uh, plug the gems in at any point. That's just weird. I don't remember seeing that before. You know, I'm almost wondering if that's uh, just on this mission. Let's try another one real quick, just to see. Oh, this mission. Oh. This is a little. This is one of the missions I didn't like because they, there's a little trick to defeating this necromancer. I won't tell you what it is, but I, I couldn't. I saw no clues, nothing that would tell me what it was. There might be something around here. Oh, re-equipping restarts the current mission. Ah, that's the catch. <laughs> okay, uh, that's still nice though, that I have that option. So I guess basically all it would do would save me the trouble of having to go back to the main uh, the main map again. Um, anyway, there you have it folks. Druid Stone, great game, definitely go pick this up. Highly, highly recommend this. If you're more of a casual player, uh, meaning, if you don't have like eight hours to dedicate to a game, this would be perfect for you. You still get that. It really scratches that itch of the uh, uh, really intense tactical, uh, strategic type of uh, combat. And you really have to think too about even like the spacing, the location of enemies, uh, teleportation. There's a lot of stuff you have to do mentally as you're playing through these maps. A lot of trial and error. Uh, so anyway, I really like it. I think you will too. But I'm gonna wrap it up here. <laughs> <laughs> just, I could probably just go on forever about it. Uh, one last thing, the still faces crate. That's what I was telling you about the... When you get these, if you're able to make it out of the map with that uh, crate, it gives you more items you could purchase. Uh, so you don't get the items for free, you have to actually use your gold on that. But that's kind of cool, even like the, the stock of the store depends on your performance in these missions. Uh, okay, so that really will do it. Uh, go get this game. I think you'll enjoy it. As always, I thank you for watching this. Please let me let me know what you think of the game if you played this. If you have any questions, I could try to answer that. Uh, but hey, go have some fun. See you next time. And that's all for this week's episode. I hope you guys enjoyed. That should be back soon. Uh, lots of uh, games to review. Been getting lots of uh, recommendations. Great stuff. I really want to look at this. Uh, a lot of these uh, suggestions are great. I do mean to get to them. You know, it just takes a while to get set up and good to go. But uh, you know, let me know what you think too. I just got this new green screen set up. Thought I'd give that a try. Uh, let me know what you think. Do you like the green screen? Do you rather have, uh, you know, the 1080 or the uh, you know the smaller gameplay screen? Me off to the side somewhere. Uh, if you got any thoughts on that, I'd like to hear it. But I'm pretty satisfied. I like using the green screen. I think it's cool. Uh, as always, I want to thank you, thank you, thank you very, very, very much for your support of this show. You are part of the team. You make Matt Chat possible. I owe it everything uh, to you uh, for these episodes and the, and the Matt Chat channel. Uh, so if you haven't done that already, if you haven't supported the show yet, please do. Just go to the link in the show notes. There's a Patreon link. Uh, you can set up a, a donation of whatever you think the show is worth. If you want to do a buck a week or a buck an episode, a lot of times I don't do the uh, a show every week anymore. Uh, so it's really not all that much, uh, you know, much cash. You just ask for a buck an episode. If you want to do two, three, whatever you're comfortable with, uh, I really appreciate it. You make these shows possible. So thank you very, very much. I truly appreciate uh, your help. All right. Uh, let's see. What about that news from the Mad Cave? Now, this is going to be jam-packed today. I got some really big, big, big news, and that is that the new Dungeons and Desktops is out. This is the second edition, uh, co-authored with my friend uh, Shane Stacks over at ShanePlays.com. It's uh, 
I know it's my book and all, but I just got to say, I'm just utterly thrilled with this publication. It's, uh, I mean, these guys just did a fantastic job. CRC Press, Taylor and Francis. I mean, for one thing, it's a lot thicker than the other book. It clocks in at about, you know, over 600 pages. It's got full color screenshots this time. Just a gorgeous work. You can make out all the detail. Uh, they even did a good job with like the, the font. You know, everything looks good. It's a lot of new stuff has been added in. A lot of people ask me what's different about the uh, second edition. Uh, well, the most obvious thing, the colors, uh, but a lot of stuff has been added, tweaked, edited. Uh, there's a bestiary of games in the back now. So the stuff that didn't make it into the main narrative, you can look back there to see uh, a lot of these other games that I think are really important or uh, worth mentioning, but just uh, kind of got in the way. A lot of people didn't like the, you know, they complained about the first edition, just kind of felt like game after game after game, not a lot of narrative. Uh, so I fixed that in this edition. Uh, so the stuff that, you know, is part of the main story is where it's supposed to be. But if there's a, just a little game I thought it, I think is really cool, you should, should know about. You know, I just stuck that in the uh, bestiary. So lots of good stuff back there. Uh, but really, I just think this is, uh, you know, I don't know who watching the show wouldn't want to copy of this. <laughs> it's really, really neat. We even have uh, Chris Avalon uh, doing the preface for this. Got a... Uh, uh, commentaries on the back by Brian Fargo, Lord British himself. I mean, really, this is just the book. <laughs> you just, you got to get a copy of this. Now, uh, let me tell you how to get one. You can go to, uh, that's my Baldur's, Baldur's Gate coin. Okay, you can get a copy of the game, for, uh, game, yeah. You get a copy of the book, uh, a couple options. One is, of course, to go to Amazon or Barnes & Noble, a site like that. It seems like they're going for about $59.95, about $60 bucks for the uh, soft cover version, which is that one. Uh, you can also go directly to crcpress.com and uh, get one from there. And one of the reasons you might want to get it from there is they have several other options. You can get a hardcover version. That will set you back $149, but I do have a, a matte uh, Workala has ordered one of those and he took some photos of it. It looks really impressive. <laughs> you know, I don't know. I mean, I guess if you got plenty of cash, you can go for that option. It, you know, it is obviously something that would stand the test of time better. But I think you'll be quite happy with the soft cover version. Uh, the, at the CRC Press site, you can also get an ebook version. You can even rinse an ebook version if you just want to, uh, you know, to read it once. Uh, or you can. Go to uh, Amazon and get a Kindle version. I mean, there's basically a bunch of different versions here. And we've already got some reviews posted on this. Uh, good friend Clint uh, from Lazy Game Reviews. I'm sure you're familiar with uh, his videos. Uh, he had this to say about it. Quote, The first edition was already a useful and enjoyable resource for folks like me who enjoy computer game history. But this new one takes it to another level. Lots of new information, historical context, and even full color illustrations this time. Uh, so really thanks uh, to Clint for posting that. And by the way, you know, if you do have a copy, uh, please uh, consider posting a review. Uh, those Amazon reviews make a huge difference for whatever reason. In a lot of my other books, they really just got practically no attention. And it's because uh, there just wasn't enough uh, reviews posted on there. Even like a middling, you know, is okay, <laughs> uh, that sort of review uh, actually does, does help a lot. Uh, so anyway, please uh, do that. If you want to sign copy, uh, we can work that out. Just let me know if you want to do that option. It might be tough if you want to get both me and Shane to sign it. You know, I think he's got his own system worked out uh, for that. But uh, you know, we could figure something out. Basically, it's easier to, for me to get a copy and then just send it to you from my address. Uh, you know, I do have a few copies from the publisher, and I was thinking just to kind of sweeten that deal. You know, if you want to go that option, I might even throw in some of my. Uh, Famous Matt Chat coins. So I've still got a few of these left. You know, I can add that uh, just to kind of, uh, you know, make it worth a little bit extra hassle. <laughs> but just, you know, whatever the price of the book is, plus the shipping basically uh, to your address, and we can make that happen. All right, what about other news? Uh, there's some more about the uh, new Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines 2 that's come out. This is by Polygon's Charlie Hall. Uh, they interviewed some of the people working on this game. And they talked a little bit about the history of Bloodlines. Uh, they, they talked about how it kind of came out at a bad time. It wasn't just that it was buggy. 
Uh, but it was competing with the likes of uh, Half-Life and uh, Master Chief, Halo, <laughs> and Solid Snake. Uh, so it was just kind of uh, lost in this sea of uh, huge hits at the time. Uh, but they also talk in there about sort of the, their visions of this new game. And I think this is really cool. This is from Ellison. You got Ellison in Minnesota uh, being interviewed. But here's what Ellison says. Uh, essentially, this is a quote, essentially we want to give you a variety of experiences in terms of what it means to be a vampire. I'm really interested in that transitional period of going from being a human into a vampire. What does that mean? What is a vampire puberty like? What about the problems they had when they were human? Are they made better or worse by becoming a vampire? Do they bring a lot of their human problems with them? What are problems like that that are like that? What are problems that are unique to being a vampire? <laughs> so I really like these questions. See, these are really interesting questions. I'm sure we probably all thought about that uh, if you're a fan of uh, vampire games. Anyway, this is really shaping up to be something special. So I'm really trying to keep my eye on this uh, Bloodlines uh, 2 game. And for some reason, my... <laughs> there we go. Evernote going crazy. Okay. Uh, I also heard from Al of a Scald against the Black Priory. This is a... You know, Al is somebody I've been wanting to get on the show. He's doing this Scald uh, system, RPG uh, maker system. Uh, classic uh, style. I'll make this happen. I'm trying to set up a Google Hangout like we used to do. Long, long overdue for one of these live Hangouts. So... Uh, just be patient. A few little details we're trying to uh, iron out there, but that will happen soon. I'll post that on the Patreon site uh, when we get to that. Uh, okay, anyway, uh, he's writing in about this uh, game, Nox Archaist. It's an 8-bit RPG for Apple II, Mac, and the PC. A retro computer game inspired by Ultima and The Bard's Tale. It will be playable on an Apple II or on a modern Mac or PC. Defend the Realm. It's a new 8-bit RPG developed by 6502 Workshop. So he says, uh, Mark Limmert seems to be an awesome and super passionate guy, and I can't think of a better interview subject for your channel. So I, I will stay in touch with Mark, so just let me know and I'll make the introduction. Uh, so take a look at that. There's a Kickstarter. Of course, you can pledge to it if you like. And let me know if you wanted me to get Mark on the show. You know, I'm always, I always like talking to... Uh, you know, people doing these labors of love, these passion projects, uh, they usually have a lot to say about not just their game, but, uh, you know, the games that inspired it. Uh, and then finally, we got Kotaku Zach Zwitsen posting about this. I thought this was hilarious. <laughs> so, you probably heard that uh, World of Warcraft is uh, doing like a classic version because a lot of people are complaining all the time about, you know, how much better things were back in the day. Uh, or they're just curious, like me. Uh, you know, I didn't start playing WoW until after Burning Crusade. Uh, so I really don't know what it was like in that early phase. Uh, so they're releasing this classic version so you can do all that. Uh, but the funny thing is, <laughs> so they got these beta testers, right? Uh, and the, the beta testers keep reporting bugs, but these aren't actually bugs. Uh, these are just what it was like back then. Uh, these are features, right? <laughs> so... They had, uh, Blizzard had to post this uh, not a bug list. This is hilarious. I, I, this, is, this is just uh, too much, right? And then there's a bunch of uh, items on this list. You can check it out. But uh, some of the ones I, I thought were funny. Uh, so it's some of these um, not a bug list items. One, quest objectives and points of interest are not tracked on the map or mini map. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Uh, creature respawn rates are much slower than in Battle for Azeroth. Uh, in, and this is my favorite. NPCs which offer multiple quests may inconsistently display them as a dot or an exclamation point on the available quest list. They were inconsistent in 1.12, and we've reproduced the exact inconsistency they had back then. See, it literally is a, it's a, it's not a bug, it's a feature, right? It's supposed to be inconsistently displayed. <laughs> you just can't make this up, right? Uh, oh, I've got one other thing I should mention here. You might remember my interview with Jeff Williams, uh, Darkstar, way back in the day. Uh, he had a Kickstarter going for this uh, movie called Everything. Let's see, a couple different cover versions of it. Uh, this is a psychological thriller presented for your approval, offering suspense and perhaps a touch of dark comedy at the expense of select individuals seeking audience with a proprietor <laughs> difficult to find. 
uh, eclectic little shop. And I think he is, let's see, does it say who stars in this? I'm pretty sure Jeff Williams himself is in here. Uh, Alan, no, it's not, yeah, Alan, J. Allen Williams is what he calls himself. Yeah, let's see. Philip Seca, George Cron, Bazana Kavar, Jeffrey Gould, Jennifer Eifert. Now, so anyway, I know he's been working on this for a while, and this, wow, it's even, this, this is in Dolby Atmos. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Uh, rated R. I haven't got a chance to watch it yet, but I'm sure he'd appreciate me uh, mentioning this to you. Looks like I got an award. The Silver, the Silver, can't make that out. Silver Creek, maybe? Festival Honorable Mention 2018. So congratulations to uh, Mr. J. Allen Williams. <laughs> Very happy. But this, this is the funny part, right? Uh, so he sent this. I don't know if this... I, don't, I don't, honestly don't remember if I pledged, what tier I pledged at for this. Um, but I got... <laughs> what do, I don't know what to make of this. This is a lock, a lock of angel hair. From the actor portraying Di Isaac Everhart in everything. In other words, uh, J. Allen Williams himself. This numbered limited edition vial contains a screen used lock of hair cut from actor J. Allen Williams by Mia Bella Salon, official hair designers <laughs> for the film. 21 of 48. So I haven't opened, I haven't uncorked this, but there is, you know, the lock of the guy's hair in here, tied with a nice little ribbon so you know i suppose if i ever need some dna evidence <laughs> want to cast a little spell on on jeffrey uh mr williams i do have that option now so <laughs> for what that's worth uh, you know just well I, and no i am not going to uh, send anybody any <laughs> vials of locks of my hair so uh, whether that's disappointing or uh, relieving uh, i i don't know all right, anyway, let's wrap this up with a quotation. And I got a quote here. I was looking for quotes about forests. And I found one that I, I thought is a, it's a really nice quote. It's very profound. So by Ralph Waldo Emerson. It goes something like this. Every book is a quotation. And every house is a quotation out of all forests and mines and stone quarries. And every man is a quotation from all his ancestors. Ponder on that and see you next time. Peabody on all of this. He had this crazy idea about breeding pine trees.